Hey everybody, welcome back. These bridezillas, they belong in an insane asylum. Insane asylum, insane asylum. This is ridiculous. You are not the first prize. I snitched on one of my closest friends for cheating on her fiance. Story time. I had a coworker who became one of my closest friends and she was way younger than me. She was engaged to a very good man. He was not as attractive as her. She was beautiful. But that didn't take away from what a good man he was. The closer I got to her, the more I started to, you know, find out the more and more stuff that she was doing. And, you know, I'm not the girl's mom. I was her friend. And I would tell her, like, hey, you shouldn't do that. Like, you're engaged. And she would tell me things like, I want to live before I get married. You know, I've never done things before. I just want to, you know, explore a little so the more and more I, I worked with her, the more and more she was doing. And I felt horrible knowing things, right? I didn't know her fiance. Like, we weren't friends, but I did meet him a couple of times. Um, But because I knew that he was such a good guy and he treated her like a princess, okay? Like, I just felt really bad. So one day out of nowhere, I get a DM. And it's from him. And he simply asked me, hey, is so-and-so cheating on me? And part of me wanted to tell him, like, the whole truth. Because even though she was my friend, I knew that she did not deserve that man. Like, that man did not deserve what she was doing to him. Period. But all I told them was, if you're asking me, I think you already know the answer. True. Very true. Shortly after that, they called off the engagement. Um, they broke up. And she never spoke to me again. We never even talked about it. We never tried addressing it because I think we both knew that it was just awkward. And I don't know. At times I felt bad about it. But, you know, they're both happily married now. And if he would have never asked me, I probably would have never told him anything. But the fact that he asked me, and I still didn't tell him anything. I just said, like, if you're asking me, I think you know, right? Which is kind of telling. But, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person he asked and he probably got more information and that's why, you know, he called it off. But yeah. So am I a snitch? And would you snitch? Yes. Let it be known. If I find out, even if we are friends, that you are cheating, I'm a snitch on you. I'm a snitch. Snitchity snitch golden snitch. I caught it in the air. Quit titch. I'm going to snitch on that quit Quidditch snitch. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. My thing is like, oh, I want to go experience life before I'm married. Okay, so this is what you do when you're single. And let me tell you, as someone who's single, it ain't that great. Being single is great. Dating is not so great. Okay. You think you're going to find better? You don't. You don't. You just get treated like it over and over and over again. Hmm, stable relationship with a man who treats me like a princess. Excessive one night stands with a-holes that treat me like garbage. I'm gonna go with the a-holes, said no one ever. Except maybe this gal. Oh, okay, comments did not pass the vibe check. This is the epitome of your coworkers are never your friend. I'd snitch on you even if we were just friends and not coworkers. Because who wants to be friends with someone who's okay with treating their partner like that? <laughs> Have we no morals? I don't know about you guys, but I like to be friends with people with morals. I would have stayed out of it. The truth was going to come out anyway. Mm, mm, no, but then you lie. Then, then if you say, no, she's not, then you're lying. People are saying that the girl in this video is a is envious that she likes this man. I don't know about envious, maybe resentful. Like resentful that this girl had a really nice man who really took care of her and yet she didn't value him. You did the right thing. But then again, I'm a little snitch, so. <laughs> Hi bride, welcome in for your bridal trial. I can take you back here. Okay. So did you have a look in mind? Any ideas of what you were thinking for the big day? Well, it's a bridal trial, so I was thinking bridal. Right, but were you thinking more like natural, more glam? What were you thinking? So you're talking to me like you have no idea who I am, but my dad is actually the top lawyer in the state. How would she so know that? And why would she care? Natural? No. 
The two okay, things are not related. Do you have any pictures or anything? Bridal glam. I don't know why that's so hard. It might be hard for her, not hard for you. Like more like neutral tones. Do you like more colorful tones? Do you want more pinks? Do you want more golds? Like what kind of tones are you thinking? Well, obviously I really like color and I already sent you over a picture of my dress before today and you can see that it had pink in it. So I don't really understand. Obviously I want something with pink, duh. All right, well, let me go ahead and get started on you. God, you're just a peach, aren't ya? Oh, this color is pretty. Oh, um, just for sanitation reasons, can you please not touch my products? It's just, I like to keep them from getting cross-contaminated or anything like that. <laughs> oh, this color is pretty too. Um, like I said, out of the chair, to touch my products. That would be super awesome. I just want to make sure that everything's staying nice and clean and sanitary. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. You are just the help. Allow me to help you out of that makeup chair and out the door. Help you along on your merry way. No, you can't. You cannot touch the products because then I'm not gonna be able to use them ever again. So unless you'd like to be charged for every product that you're contaminating, no. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Throws a lot of makeup at the wall. <sighs> Finish my makeup now. Well, I kind of can't because you just broke my stuff. I think you should leave. No, you're gonna finish my makeup. I can't, you just broke it. You need to leave now before I call the cops. <laughs> they would laugh in your face if they walked in here and saw me in here. What are they gonna do? They know my dad. I doubt that they will. They'll probably laugh in your face when I show them the videotapes of you going crazy. What do you mean? You have cameras in here? <laughs> Whatever, I'm leaving, but I'm not paying for any of that. That is not my fault. You made me mad. Oh, believe me, I think you will be. <laughs> Whatever. I'm sorry, is this bride also like four years old? Cause that would be the only explanation for this behavior. The only explanation for throwing tantrums and throwing things around and not listening to people when they set their boundaries with you is that you're a child. Here, have some Coco Melon. Here, Coco Melon for you. Where's, where's my iPad? Oh no, I don't have any. Oh no! What are we to do? How will I entertain? You know, when she first said, I don't know if you know who I am. I thought she was gonna say she was some kind of influencer. But my dad is the top lawyer in the state. How the f would anyone know that? And why would anyone care? How, bestie. Your dad's success does not mean that you are successful. And it certainly does not mean that you get to treat people however you want. Hi, this is XYZ Law Firm. This is Xavier speaking. How may I help you? Hi, Xavier. My name is Kendra. I am calling from my makeup studio. I just had your daughter in today and she was coming to get her bridal trial done. Oh, yes, that was today, wasn't it? Um, is everything okay? I'm not sure why you're calling me though. No. Um, so while she was here, she actually threw a huge tantrum because I guess <laughs> I didn't know who she was and what she would be wanting. And she started to touch my products, which was causing contamination. And then she got mad that I asked her to not touch my products and she threw them against the wall and now they're all broken and she's refusing to pay for them. <laughs> I'm sure this is a big misunderstanding. Um, my daughter would never do those types of things. And honestly, without proof, I don't really know why you're contacting me anyway. Oh no, don't worry about that proof part. I've already sent your email address, the videos of her in my store destroying the makeup. And don't worry, there was audio on it too, so you could hear how she was talking the entire time. Oh, um, l let me pull those up real quick. Hey Kendra, um, how about you just tell me how much it is and I'll go ahead and just send you a check for that. Yeah, you do that. You oh, do that, wonderful. daddy. I'm so glad. And we'll be resolved with that solution, correct? Yes, but I would love for you to have a conversation with your daughter about this and kind of 
deter her from doing it ever again? Yeah, yeah, let's just not get this out, okay? Not a problem, Xavier. You have a great rest of your day. Thank you for taking my call. Something tells me that's not the first call like that he's received. Well, you don't have any proof. Well, without proof, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm a lawyer, me, 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 me. That's like literally the most incriminating thing you could, you could possibly say. Well, you don't have any proof, so... Says every supervillain ever. Well. Until you have proof, you can't do anything. Me, 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 me. The proof. Allow me to present you with Exhibit A. <laughs> we'll do this in a language he understands. The proof. <coughs> God, I feel bad for her fiance. That's crazy that you have to have like cameras in your establishment. Just in case a bridezilla decides to throw a tantrum. My unpopular opinion is that if you are getting married and your fiance is overly critical of your hair, your makeup, your clothing, they're overly anxious that you're gonna look bad, that is a red flag. Story time. So I've been a makeup artist for over 20 years and I've done a lot of weddings in that time. There's a certain percentage of my clients that wanna ring their fiance and show them the makeup to get their opinion. Maybe they're nervous, maybe they just wanna show how hot they look, whatever. The most common response you get from the fiance when they call is, wow, I think you look beautiful, do you like it? Occasionally they'll throw in, if you're happy, I'm happy, but that's usually about it. Ooh, I don't like so that. So about 10 years ago, I was booked to do a makeup trial on a beautiful, mature, first time bride who'd had a bit of trouble finding an artist. She told me she'd had two or three trials and the other artists just weren't getting her brief. She was wearing a non-traditional wedding dress, so she wanted her makeup to be more red carpet and less bridal. I was like, sweet, I love doing red carpet. She came for her trial and she told me the dress was going to be a gorgeous gold sequin shift dress. She had beautiful olive skin, dark hair, and a fantastic smile. So I said, listen, you have a fantastic smile. Would you consider doing a really natural face with a smashing red lip? She said, oh my gosh, yes, I love wearing a red lip, let's do it. So we get going on the makeup and she's telling me all about how her fiance hated the makeup from the other trials. He works in a visual field, he's very opinionated, so he insisted she keep shopping around for another makeup artist. I'm nosy, so of course I asked to see the photos from the other trials. They were a little bit more traditional bridal than we were doing, but they weren't that bad. I thought it was a little weird that she hadn't gone back to adjust or change it, but not every artist is for every client and that's okay. So we're chatting away while I do her makeup and she tells me how she thinks she's really lucky that her fiance chose her because she's older and you know, he could have had anyone. So then she tells me he's very particular about everything in the wedding, right down to ringing the reception venue and insisting they change their light bulbs. He also wants to see her straight after the makeup trial so that he can assess the makeup for himself. So I'm trying to be diplomatic. So I'm going, well, I'm sure he just wants to make sure you're happy, right? Here's your fiance. He should be happy if you're happy. Period. Gara. So we finish up the makeup and she is super happy. The red lip is giving, the skin is glowing, but most importantly, she loves it. She's so excited to go and show her fiance and she's already sending me messages before she gets there to tell me how much she loves it. Imagine my surprise the next day when I got two three minute voicemails from him telling me how I should do the makeup differently. Like, I'm sorry, was it your face we're doing? So I immediately ring the bride to say, hey, this is the voicemail that I've got and I just wanted to find out how you felt about your makeup. So she tells me that the fiance wants to come along to another trial so that he can direct me how to do the makeup. Uh, I have to tell you, my ick senses were icking. Long story short, I didn't end up doing the wedding because she called it off. Because the engagement was called off. Good. Moral of the story, if he doesn't trust you enough to choose your own makeup, he does not respect you. Next. Oh my God. If somebody told me to change anything about my dress or my makeup. First of all, I'm not asking. I'm not asking your opinion. Okay. I'm happy with my own opinion. But if anyone tells me that my chosen dress or makeup or hair or anything Mm. Me. If it's anything other than holy, <laughs> you look like a <laughs> goddess. I'm not marrying you. 
obviously there are issues where like, you know, who knows, maybe I picked like a purple lipstick or something and like blue eyeshadow. Like, I just like, I trust my taste, okay? And I also trust makeup artists, all right? Most of them. <laughs> the point is, is if you like the way that you look, you also have a vision for what you wanna look like on your wedding day. And it is nobody's business to tell you what you should and shouldn't look like. I don't like it, I don't like it at all. This is definitely more of a groomzilla, obviously. An ex-groomzilla. Made me so happy that they're not actually getting married, cause like, it's one thing if the groom is like really involved in the process and like, you know, the vision for the wedding wants to be like a representation of the both of you and your relationship. And like, he wants to say, cause there's so many grooms that like don't want to be involved and then they, they just leave all the work to the bride, which isn't okay. Like, I feel like grooms should be involved in some of it, but telling you, especially when it's like stuff that concerns you, like how you want to look. Remember ladies, if his reaction is anything less than Oh my God. I don't know why Jennifer Coolidge came out of there. He's not the one. He wishes you look like something else or someone else. All right, I just watched this video of someone sharing that they were accused of outshining the bride at this wedding that they were invited to. From what I gathered, this person is African and American and they were invited to a German wedding. They were apparently told that the dress code was to dress to impress and so this person showed up in their traditional wear. But when the guest got there, apparently the bride and her family were not very impressed. They said that her outfit was too extravagant. They also accused her of drawing attention from the bride and commanding the room. Now this story, as well as another story that I just read about a woman who was just thrown out of a wedding by the bride for wearing a gold dress and who was told by the bride, you are not, quote, you are not the first prize. This has me bewildered. Where is all of this insecurity coming from? This fear that as a grown woman, someone is going to steal your thunder at your own wedding. I'm sorry, but unless someone is wearing white at your wedding, and that's like an obvious, oh, she's trying to steal your thunder. Like everybody knows by now, you don't do that. There is literally no possibility that anyone will outshine you at your wedding. It's your wedding. Okay. It's your wedding. Let's get rid of these Delulu thoughts that we want everyone around us to be ugly so that we look beautiful in comparison. It's giving insecure, it's giving delusional. Honestly, if you are afraid that another person is going to outshine you at your own wedding, then step up your game. Because Period. as a proud Nigerian woman, as a proud Yoruba woman, if you are not coming to my wedding in your absolute best, Le don't come. Yes. If you do not think that my wedding is worthy of your most beautiful, brightest, intricate, mm. most stunning, outfit don't come if your outfit is not giving I am coming to celebrate you in the very best that I have don't even bother coming for context this is how we do weddings in my culture this is how we expect mm. our guests to show up and show out I want to look back at photos from my wedding and think about how beautiful and fabulous my guests looked that they came as their best and felt like their best but honestly i am so thankful that i grew up in a culture that is the complete opposite of some of the wild stories wedding stories that i've been reading and seeing i am curious what you all think is it just insecurity am i missing something else here i want to hear your thoughts below and please be kind and respectful we're just having a conversation here okay <laughs> fine I don't like being respectful. <laughs> no, I do think it's a little bit of insecurity. Maybe in this case, like, prejudice. Like, I don't, especially if you're showing up in like a traditional outfit that you would wear, like a cultural outfit that you would wear to a wedding. And like she said, if you're afraid of being upstage, then baby girl, get out the big guns. Come on, show up and show off. Cause it's true. like. I want my wedding guests to look like literal movie stars, okay? I want you to look your best and feel your best. I want you to get amazing photos. I want you to just have the absolute time of your life feeling like the absolute best version of yourself. Please, that is my only requirement. Don't say dress to impress if you don't want to be impressed. That's a good point, they did say dress to impress. What does that mean if, if you don't want people to like look nice and to wear their best shit? What does that mean? 
What a weird way to tell someone they look good. <laughs> it's so true. You look way better than me and I'm getting married. I simply cannot allow it. I get that I'm me and y'all y'all, but I was in a Facebook group this morning and Ooh. I'm not gonna post the video or anything, but this girl who was having a destination wedding said that her travel agent reached out to her because people are saying they wanna stay days after the wedding. And she was like, no, tell them, no, they cannot stay after the wedding. And people in the comments were like, what? Wow. And sis was like, no, they're coming for my wedding. Like they don't, this is not their vacation. And people were like, well, people treat it like vacation. She was like, well, they shouldn't because they're here for my wedding. And I was just kind of like, if it's that deep, then maybe you and Bay should go to a different resort for the extra days if you don't want to bump into people. But I feel like if I'm coughing up a grip to come attend your wedding, period, you to pay for a flight, like unless you're paying for my accommodations and my flight, then you can't tell me when to come and when to go. Um, but she she was really, you know, stuck on it and kept replying in comments to everyone. So I'm curious, if you have a destination wedding, do you let people stay after? Or do we not care? Uh, okay, so cat's out of the bag. We are having a destination wedding. I know, everybody's living to me. It's so selfish, Charlotte. It's not selfish because my family's from Europe, so it's not a destination wedding for them. But listen, I get it. I get that it, you know, might be expensive for some people. I absolutely get it. However, I want people to treat it as an excuse to go and see the country, to experience the culture, to spend extra days at the beginning or the end. Really go and immerse yourself in this destination. And I want you to just use it as an excuse to just go and live it up. By all means, come early, come late. We'll see you at the pool, we'll see you at the beach. I might be hung over the day after the wedding, so I might not come out of my room for a few hours. Might wanna drink some champagne in bed, little mimosas, perhaps. But yo, like if people are going all the way there for a destination wedding, you absolutely have to let your guests treat it like it's their vacation too. Yes, the wedding is part of it, but as long as you're not paying for it, what does it matter if they stay a couple days? You don't own the resort. Absolutely not. If I'm paying my coins as a vacation, your wedding is one of the excursions I'm attending. I love it. I love it. Come for an appy and an Aperol spritz. Have an oyster. Watch me get married and then go and enjoy all of it. We're not gonna have a post-wedding brunch. Be hungover, go to the beach, enjoy. God, you can tell I've been to a lot of weddings. I'm just like, <laughs> I just want people to be able to enjoy everything. The food, the wine, the surrounding areas. Just have fun and come to the wedding, but go have fun, but come to the wedding. You know what I'm saying? That's the attitude. That's the attitude you gotta have. I honestly don't really think this is that common. I think this bride is just, I don't know what she's smoking, but I don't want, do, do not pass that to me. I just assume people stayed since they came all that way. I'm not flying to a destination to stay overnight. No, you're not. Are you kidding me? Jet lag, everybody's gonna be hung over? No, I'm gonna need at least three days to recover. I think that you can have, as a bride, you can have certain rules, okay? Either, you know, you want a child-free wedding, you know, you want, I don't even know what other rules you could possibly have, to be honest. But deciding when your f guests decide to fly in and leave, like as long as they're there for your wedding, who gives a sh Who gives a flying f If you don't wanna entertain your guests after the wedding, go on your honeymoon, leave. Go to a different resort, go to an Airbnb, have your privacy. You're done. That's so comical to me. You're crazy, you're crazy. Maybe crazy enough that you belong in an insane asylum. Subscribe!